you know where your drinking water comes from? Do you know what happens to all of the chemicals that you use day to day? Things such as cosmetics that wash down the drain, pharmaceuticals that flush down the toilet, motor oil running off parking lots, and even paint down a drain. Many of these chemicals eventually make it into the water that flows underground. Dr. Barb Mahler, a scientist at the United States Geological Survey and adjunct professor at the University of Texas, is studying what happens to chemicals like these after most of us forget about them. Most people don't think about the fact that there's water underground. And what happens is when it rains, some of that water infiltrates into the surface and some of it makes it all the way down to the, the water table. And that water table isn't static. Water actually moves underground. And so that's why we have water in creeks. Water is flowing underground and discharging into creeks and then it becomes surface water. In karst aquifers, the water is flowing through spaces that have dissolved out of the rock. And we don't usually think of rock as dissolving. I mean, granite doesn't dissolve. And that's the interesting property that limestone has, is that when it comes into contact with water that's just a little bit acid, like rainwater's a little bit acid, soil water's even a little bit more acid, there's a chemical reaction. And the rock itself dissolves. Karst aquifers, such as the Edwards Aquifer in Central Texas, can be more vulnerable to contamination. But why is this? Dr. Mahler is studying what happens in aquifers with a class of contaminants known as PAHs. You can kind of imagine, if you most aquifers you could think of as a big sandbox. And the karst aquifer you'd think of maybe as a block of concrete that you'd cracked and then dissolved out some some tubes through it, a system of, of tubes. And if you were to pour something poisonous, like a pesticide or an herbicide or some other type of contaminant on top of those two systems, then it would move really slowly through the sand grain aquifer and some of it would stick to the sand grains and some of it would get filtered out. Whereas in the karst aquifer, it would just be funneled or focused into those zones of what we call preferential flow, those pipes going through the rocks. So in karst aquifers, there's this very important interaction between what goes on at the surface and what goes on underground because they're so closely connected. So really anything that we use at the surface is gonna find its way underground and it's gonna find its way underground quickly and it's gonna move through the underground very, very quickly to come out at springs. One category of contaminants are pesticides insecticides, herbicides, things that we put on our landscaping and our gardens and our golf courses to try and control weeds and try and control pests. Well, those things are by design toxic. They're, they're meant to kill things, uh, so they are contaminants. And whenever it rains, they wash off the surface and they go into the groundwater system and they can move very quickly, sometimes in a matter of hours, from the surface to come out at Barton Springs. Um, another category of contaminants uh, that we're all familiar with are things like gasoline. Gasoline spills and oil spills, also leaking from underground gasoline storage tanks. Those can enter karst aquifers very quickly and can cause contamination that can move through the system in pretty much the same concentrations that we find them at the surface, they could come out the springs. Yet a third kind of contaminant is sediment and contaminants that are associated with sediment. So there are some contaminants that tend to adhere to sediment. And if the sediment moves through the system, they'll bring those contaminants with them. The reason that you find them in karst is that the openings in the subsurface are large enough for contaminants to move on sediment to move through and for that sediment to not get filtered out. So these are contaminants that sorb to solid phases rather than being dissolved in water. And in karst systems, we can find those as well.